Um, Yusan, you've really been a great mentor and guide to myself and many of the companies that we work with. Can you share more information about the legal risks? You know, as a, as a general partner, I have unlimited personal liability in my limited liability company. And I'm a mother at the end of the day, and I don't want to ever go to bed in an orange jumpsuit, as they say in the US. Can you tell me how I protect myself and my firm uh, moving forward? Sure. Um, so I'm a lawyer, so I talk about legal risk. Um, well, what's in what, what is important to realize is that, yeah, it, it all, it's really a lot to deal, deal with, but I think where MAS is coming from is that when they are providing these guidelines, uh, they're basically uh, what they call best practices, okay, uh, for the institutions that they are essentially uh, prescribing for, okay? So um, I think it's important to say, uh, and MAS is not gonna like this, but they say this in, in their own website, uh, and, and this is true, they're not observing MAS guidelines is not a criminal offense. So don't worry about the orange jumpsuit. Um, and it also does not by itself attract civil liability, okay? However, MAS does expect institutions to observe the spirit of the guidelines. It's, a, it, it's interesting uh, that they talk about the spirit of the guidelines, uh, but in the case of the TRM guidelines, it's really, really specific about these things. But that doesn't change the fact that TRM guidelines are, are, are just that. They're, they're guidelines, they're not mandatory, uh, nor do they have the force of law. But uh, before we all heave a sigh of relief, that said, non-compliance or not being able to demonstrate uh, that you have a certain level of technology risk management policies and systems in place may affect your ability, uh, if you're an FI, to obtain or maintain your regulatory uh, licenses. Yeah. So for example, uh, in the applications, uh, regulatory licensing applications um, I'm working on, MAS is routinely asking about uh, TRM uh, policies uh, when they are processing these uh, applications. Now, in addition, failure to comply with uh, TRM guidelines may have an impact on the overall risk assessment of these financial institutions. So where they do not manage the risk, especially if it's uh, relating to AML and CFT risk, and, and increasingly, I think this, these, these things are converging. Uh, and if they don't manage their risk to the standard that is required, then MAS says that they will take appropriate action against uh, these institutions. And these could include uh, uh, you know, a slap on the wrist, uh, warning and reprimand letters. Yeah, uh, It may go on to uh, include things like restrictions on your operations or your business activities that you're licensed to carry out. Uh, and at worst, it could also uh, result in uh, financial penalties or even revocation of licenses. So you can see that MES has really gone into, uh, into a lot of detail and Wendy has really summarized it uh, very, very well, I must say, because there are so many new uh, aspects that uh, need to be covered. Now, um, while, so, so the thing is with this level of um, kind of prescriptive uh, requirements uh, in technology risk management. Uh, number one, you can see that uh, MAS is taking it very seriously. Uh, and number two, I would say that while non-compliance with TRM guidelines does not by itself give rise to civil liability, and in this case, we are thinking about things like uh, statutory uh, 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 you know, liability in tort, for example, for breach of uh, statutory duties. Yeah? So that does not happen uh, directly. But if the customers of the institution suffer losses, for example, if they were hacked or, or if uh, there was a breach of security uh, and they suffer loss as a result of failure uh, to meet those standards that are prescribed in the TRM guidelines, then there may be a basis for a claim against that institution for negligence and not fulfilling their duty of care to the standard required. Now, I promise to be provocative, you son. I had uh, the great privilege in Malaysia a couple of years back to be on a panel with Andrew Fasto. Uh, if you remember Enron, anybody, maybe I'm showing my age here, but if you remember Enron, he was the chief loophole officer slash CFO uh, <laughs> who was actually jailed for six years for breaking the spirit of the law. So I am still nervous about those orange jumpsuits, you son. Uh, what do you believe from an SME's perspective is the right legal risk management measures that we need to take in order to mitigate that risk? 
Um, I think I think the corporate culture has evolved quite a lot from since uh, Enron times, and I think a lot of the uh, what it has provoked is a lot of legislation actually uh, to kind of try and you know solidify these rules. But I think also the uh, the, the well examples made of uh, you know these uh, officers who were I think the the attitude then was well let's see how much I can get away with, uh, and so they would lawyer up. I'm sorry to use that term. I'm a lawyer. Uh, and then uh, tell ask the lawyers how how little do I have to do to get away from uh, to to get around this or to get uh, you know to to avoid certain uh, types of uh, you know the the need to comply yeah that was the attitude then I think the I think the 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 sort of culture has shifted to how do I comply um, but that has also uh, been combined with uh, greater and greater uh, supervision I would say a lot. Uh, a lot of regulatory authorities have become a lot more activist. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can see that actually in the TRM guidelines, how detailed uh, and how prescriptive they are. Um, and, and so correspondingly, it's become harder. And the reason why I think uh, the, the, you know, the Enron executives as well as, you know, uh, I think a couple of partners of uh, the, the, uh, the former Arthur Anderson uh, were, were incarcerated is because um, there was an intent yeah, to get around things. There was an intent to defraud, there was an intent to uh, essentially cover up things. So, so that gave rise to criminal liability. Yeah. Whereas here we are talking about meeting standards uh, and, and, and generally I would say financial institutions, institutions want to show that they are uh, trustworthy uh, because at the end of the day, the financial industry is built on trust. Yes. Uh, I know we are talking about trustless and, and in blockchain and things like that, but it's still based on trust. Uh, yep. Whether your trust, so so if the trust is based on institutions, then um, you know the, the the compliance behavior has to be has to be of a certain standard. I would say. Wonderful answer, and you know, um, I specialize in reputation risk, and we always talk about a legal and regulatory license to operate, but also a social license to grow and innovate. Um, so yeah, really great points, and thanks for reassuring us as well uh, that you know the future can be rosy without the the stressed uh, nights laying awake wondering if my penetration test is going to work for us or not.